everyone else here, who else is here like can everybody see attendees i don't even know that. i believe they so can. yeah when uh, if people are in gallery view they can see the other okay good other folks so like meg can see that phil is here and rod can see that when yeah. is here. when how so. just said yes yeah <laughs> okay good thanks mine when how he was texting me were you texting me or emailing me over the past couple of days. I'm, I'm losing track now. I have too many inboxes. I totally am losing track these days. <laughs> but anyways, all good. All good. So Tim, I think, um, well, we'll, well, it's 10 o'clock or sorry, ugh, 10 o'clock. If you're in Lisbon, it's 10 o'clock. But if you're in, where are you? Are you in, are you in I'm Washington? in LA. So I'd be, oh. it's two o'clock my time, five o'clock Eastern time and yeah. 11 PM in Germany, according to Rod. So we're all over so, the world right now. We're doing good. Good to know. So we'll give it. We'll give it one more minute. We'll let. We'll let people suffer with our idle banter here before we um, dive into the today's topic. Which, for those of you that know me, I freaking love this stuff. Like when we talk about positioning, I think it's because. Well, I know what it is. It's because it brings back memories of how much I sucked. And once I figured this out, and again, I I use that term loosely because that's being generous. But once I made serious progress on this man, did it change my business. And I've seen it do that for other people. So I, I get a little giddy about this stuff. And, it, and the desire to make a difference, but the, the actual steps seem contradictory to this, I don't know, nature that we have. So Human this nature, is a great, right? top, great topic today. <laughs> great, great topic. All right, well, let's go ahead and start. We're, we're recording, are we not? We are recording. Okay, excellent. Okay, I am Joel. Welcome to this week's weekly briefing. I'm going to stop my share so you can see our bright, smiling faces. Say hello to my compadre, Tim Thompson. Say hi, Tim. Hey, compadre. Good to see you all today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for those of you that are not familiar or are new to the weekly briefing, this is a 30 minute chunk of time that Tim and I set aside to get together with owners and just invite anybody and everybody from the industry where we say, hey, what's going on? What's the issue that people are talking about? What's the trend that we're observing or seeing that we want you to know about? Um, what's you know a hot button issue that maybe has come up in the community? So with that, Tim, where did this one come from? Why did this come up this week? Gosh, isn't it interesting too, the, the progress you and I have when we start asking ourselves the question, what's the real problem? What's the real problem? Because sometimes I feel like the, the conversation is only about solutions. And this week we were diving into this desire to set yourself apart from others. And it's somewhat rooted in the sales conversation we had, whatever it was, you know, eight days ago or nine days ago in the survey where people are saying, I would love for clients to find me instead of me finding clients. And so the question started rolling itself out of, well, what does it take for someone to find you? How do you stand out? Then we have this idea of bold positioning. And tomorrow in Confab, coincidentally, you're talking to um, some business owners who took some very bold positioning and are seeing great results. So I think the pennies just dropped for us. And we started recognizing, oh, there's a sphere of rejection that holds us back from the real work of getting positioning done. And we thought, let's break that barrier this week. Let's start talking about it and giving people the confidence they need to, to do this well. So to, to give everyone here context, if I remember correctly, when we did this sales huddle, so we invited everybody in our community, let's get together and just talk about sales. And it was basically, hey, what are the pain points? What are the struggles? And, and a lot of people showed up. And I think it was something like 90% of the people that we polled in real time, they said, my dream of sales is I wish clients would just find me rather than me having to go find them. Was that, it wasn't it 90% or 91 yeah. or something? It was huge, <laughs> 90%. Yeah. Yeah. And the other options they could have selected, I thought were very legitimate. Well, no, that's the dream of sales, but everyone said, no, I want people to find me. And then, like you said, the uh, the guests that are coming into Confab tomorrow, it's Ricardo and Hung, the two principals at BN. And BN, several years ago, again, you and I had lunch with these guys, remember at the Rose Cafe in Venice here a few Absolutely. years ago? Absolutely, yeah. 
And I was so flattered because they were saying, Tim, Joel, like we listened to you guys for years, the podcast and I don't know, whatever all the stuff it is that we create. And they're like, we, we did our best to implement it as best we could. And they, it got them a lot of knowledge and understanding. And one of the big things was around positioning. And with them, they took this, I'm going to say what I initially thought was crazy. Like, I know, I know there's narrow positioning, but then they doubled down and they said, we are going to go all in on this thing called inclusive motion design. That's their positioning, right? And they, they are like, the future is inclusive, make it bien. That's their mm -hmm. statement. When I first heard about that, I thought, God, that sounds brilliant, but that is so narrow. I'm almost terrified. Yeah. Now, it's one of those moments where you're thinking, am I... Are they really listening to me? Don't blame me if this is wrong. That's way too narrow, right? We even get kind of uh, hung uh, up on that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, for sure. There's there's definitely moments when, right, when we give advice and we, I mean, we, of course, we believe this is the, the solution or the path forward, but there's that part of me that's like, I don't know, would I make that same choice? That's pretty, that's kind of nuts. However, for, for them, it worked out. I mean, it's it's turned out to be a brilliant move. And the fact that they're now owning this category in effect and seeing a lot of success and creating a name for themselves and all this, it's really been exciting to see them be a part of it. So with that, I guess, case study, where, where do you want to start this conversation today? Yeah, let's start with the fear. Like, I'm, I think it's curious to explore what holds us back and, you know, the term I use is we lie to ourselves. So what lies are we telling ourselves that holds us back? Um, and the, the the reason I call it a lie is we also know the truth. Um, so when we're looking at ourselves in the mirror, we know what makes the difference. But then we have this other side that's afraid to, in, uh, to take that risk. Because right now I'm okay, right? I'm milk toast, but I'm making a living. My agency has enough projects coming in. I've made all these promises to people that their livelihood, they can put it on my shoulders and I'll take the burden for, for, from them, which is also a lie we tell ourselves, but different day. And then there's this moment where you say, but I know I need to go do something more, or I have a preference that people would find me instead of me having to do all the work and all the outreach, because eventually I'm going I'm to burn out and all these promises I'm making to others, I can't keep. So, you know, what's the difference there? And I, when we say, hey, we'll be bold, you know, distinguish yourself, make a, make a narrow positioning so that people can specifically look for you for that, that result or for that, um, you know, tribal calling that makes me want to choose you over someone else. And the first thing we hear is, oh, if I narrow my positioning, I'm getting rid of all of that business. No, the people in the wings beyond that positioning are going to not find me. And therefore now I'm going to have less instead of more. Yeah. I guess it's that idea of like, well, there, if there's all this traffic going down the highway, if I pick one, one lane and I just own this one lane, then all those other lanes of traffic are all just going to go away because I'm in this one lane. So I, I'm thinking of the fear is something like this. Because I remember going through this exercise when I, when I was running a company and I had, I think, 20 employees. And I was like, I, I just got my ass handed to me by the head of creative services at DirecTV. I spent the past three months deciding we're going to double down and narrow and go niche, right? Even though this sounds scary, here's what it looks like. We're changing our name. We're going to be narrow. We're going to be known for this, this one thing. And my employees all kind of looked around the room and somebody was actually honest enough in that moment to say, so should we all start polishing our resumes? I mean, that is literally the human nature response called, there's yeah. no way that's going to work. Like you're telling me we currently do like six types of whatever deliverables we have five six seven different expertise and we're going to only talk, tell the world about one all that other stuff is going to go away and it's just not true but i think it's something about when we succeed we, we go into this protectionist mindset of now i have a whole lot more to lose right like my success becomes almost the enemy of 
risk taking because well now I have so much more to lose whatever it is that I'm currently doing just keep doing that because that will maintain and protect what I've built whereas if I take that risk maybe all of that could go away yeah and it's not like no one's to blame it's not bad education or lack of 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 desire or even just being brave it's none of that um it's human nature to say preserve. And it's your mind telling you, your mind creates a bias that says, whatever you have, that's all there is. And you have to train your mind and measure things outside of it. This is the, the, any business book you read always tells you, look outside of your own mind, do analysis, understand something. Even who boom my cheese is tells you literally read the writing, put the writing on the wall. So you remember what that is. It's so that you're outside of your, the analytical or the lack of analysis your brain is doing. To, to recognize, no, what I'm telling myself isn't true. There is an abundance beyond my current take. So do I have to compromise? You know, other, the other five offerings that I, I put out there that, um, that go beyond my positioning or my desired positioning, I don't even like those offerings anyway. I'm just doing that to keep this machine going and we're compromising and therefore creating even a stronger bias where what you and I are saying and the results we've seen repeatedly is that a strong positioning actually carves yourself away from the marketplace in a unique way. And now you are the signal in the noise. People can recognize you and find you when they Google that term that you've created. So inclusive inclusivity, right? Um, what, what's their positioning BN's positioning inclusive marketing. Yeah, inclusive emotion design. In fact, inclusive yeah, emotion design. Even- yeah, and they yeah. took they even collapsed it and made my favorite thing, which I call a sniglet, in D with a trademark on it. So now they even have a term that's trademarked in theirs, which is really brilliant. So yeah, yeah so your point. Google, Google will find a- that. I know what you're looking for because it's the yeah. one company that's positioned that way. If they said they were editorial motion design graphic company with, uh, you know, in, I don't know, Owned, owned and operated by whatever you know there's all that stuff out there sure your resume is clear but it, the that it doesn't find you specifically for the capabilities that you are at your strength there and that's what we're encouraging you is actually you're gonna you're gonna thrive you'll find more profit you'll connect greater with those clients the results in your and of your business is going to be stronger in that area um to, to be honest, sometimes the gross revenue goes down, right? And that's if that's the only scorecard you're looking at, sure. But profits will go up. So you can work less and make more. That's a desired result too that we can see in this. Um, so it, we, that fear, let's, you know, just starting with the fear, we have to kind of recognize that the fear is real. Where does the fear come from? And then how do we get past that fear to know that Tim and Joel aren't just encouraging you to jump off a bridge without a parachute? Well, look, I'm going to, I'll be honest because I'm thinking about when I tell that story of, you know, running my studio and narrowing that positioning, I'm telling that story with hindsight, right? Like it all worked out beautifully and Joel was right, but in real time, it was, it was nuts. I was terrified. I did. I had no idea if it was going to work. I just said, you know what? I can't keep doing what we're doing like I can't add a sixth or seventh or eighth offering to what we're doing. Cause that was what my employees were like, let's start offering rendering services. Let's start doing tape. Yeah. Right. I'm not kidding. This is, these were the thoughts we were having. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I realized after this famous incident with direct TV, no, this isn't going to work. So what I noticed was I said, you know what? Tim, I want to, I was so passionate. I want to do rebrands. Like I want to launch TV networks because I know we've got what it takes. We can totally kill it. But I noticed if I put myself in the shoes of those buyers and I looked at my brand and how we were positioned, there was no way we were going to get a shot at those things because they would be like, why would I go to a generalist, right? Like, why would I go to a family doctor if I need brain surgery? You don't, you just you never, ever will get that shot. So when I did this narrowing, I said, okay, we're going to narrow and we're going to go out and claim this ground. We're going to tell everybody that everything's changed. And then I want to go call those people and say, we want a shot at your 
you know, to rebrand or launch your network. And you know what? I think it was, I mean, something like that over the next two to three years, we did five network rebrands and we had never done one before. So even though, yes, Joel was right, that's not the point. I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to pat myself on the back. I'm honestly saying I was terrified too, but it worked. Well, so think about the actions you take too, right? You narrow your positioning. That's just not an exercise for marketing. It's an exercise for leadership. My hiring profile changes, but the direction I want to go changes, even the lack of commoditization of my services, right? I think, I think the greatest disservice a motion design company can do is say, now I'm going to add editorial and live action services to it. Because you're like, well, it's not that that's not a possible strategy, but the minute you're calling me and saying, Tim, should I add live action? Should I add editorial? You're adding commodities. And I have to say to them, wait, what are we trying to accomplish? What, what is it that your studio does uniquely that by adding these additional services actually helps you accomplish something greater? Than what you're doing right now, not should you add a wider range to your already commoditized business, that's you're failing yourself even further, you actually are stretching yourself harder to get um, results that are not going to accomplish the goal you're trying to. Um, so that's the push you and I often get to have is that this, you know, we're the knowledgeable outsiders, we, ha we have a, a year, an ear that says, hey, you're in tune to who you are, or you're not in tune to who, who you are. And we can walk alongside somebody and help them perfect it. We don't do it for them, but we help somebody understand what it sounds like, um, let people bounce it off of us. And here's the results, right? We see people brighten up. We see their, their team engage and understand something different. And there are additional benefits way beyond just um, you know the sales side of it. I was actually thinking, you know, there's probably three benefits I can come up with with the area you're positioning, or in this case, I, I thought of it as like the three benefits of bold positioning. So not mm -hmm. narrowing it, but actually kind of having positioning that's so clear. And then beyond that, you're loud and proud. You're putting it out there um, as clear as possible, never afraid to mention it, never afraid to add that to your pitch deck. You know, that bold positioning is just even owns it even more. Um, so I was thinking there's three three benefits um, to that. Um, do you want me to fill those in? Can I put those yeah, out there? Me, oh yeah, yeah. Let me let me let me get my notes as well. So I'll um, you take yeah. the first one and then I'll mention the second one. Yeah, the first one I think is when you're when you have bull positioning, your firm is no longer easily replaceable. Um, and what that means is that when you're because someone knows who you are specifically they have a confidence that that gets them those results. So the idea of the generalist um, versus the, the brain surgeon is I know specifically why I came to you. I'm not gonna go from one brain surgeon to the other brain surgeon mid surgery, right? I'm gonna stick with this uh, plan, with the strategy that you provide and my confidence in who you are and what you're capable of comes clear because you have a bold positioning and you found me and. Therefore, we collaborated to get that work done. Yeah, the uh, the second one that we had on this list here was this thing we talked about that dovetails from the sales huddle last week, which is clients find you instead of you having to find them. And and I'm I would just hold up again that example of well, one the uh, inclusive motion design as as a type, right? So don't 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 try and steal that because that's that's BN's positioning. They they own that space. But what's your what does it look like for you to manifest your positioning following that similar strategy? What's the space, the word, the phrase, the language, the point of view, the value, the values that that you can legitimately own? And then I, I, there's a podcast I did. Tim, do you remember? I think it was it was on Jonathan Starks podcast. And he and I were spitballing about the value of SEO and how people find you and all this stuff. And we sort of had this breakthrough moment in the podcast where I said, well, think about it, Jonathan. If people go searching for, um, you know, uh, a consultant to teach software developers how to run their business, Jonathan Stark doesn't show up there, even though he's this amazing, brilliant guy that's known by probably tens of thousands of people. But if you search the ditching hourly guy, 
he's right at the top and then there's essentially nobody else. And it's just because he started to own that language years ago. I'm the ditching hourly guy. Let's not charge by the hour. Let's not charge for our time. I'm ditching hourly, ditching hourly. And now when you go to find him, he's number one because you get it. It's, a, it's such a simple thing. So in a way, what we were realizing was the whole idea of SEO called we're going to pack a bunch of terms that are all commodities. They're all generic. But somehow, if we get the right mixture of them, people will find us and we'll be on Google page one. It's, it's actually sort of the opposite thinking of what is the word or phrase that you can invent that nobody else is using, right? And that moves you and from the A to the category because you've invented that phrase. You are the people that do that unique um, position or that unique, unique service. Um, yeah, it's it's um it's a it's the, that clarifier plays itself out, um, and the last one when that in that clarification of being bold in your positioning, it actually gives your team confidence and clarity, um, and I think that's the one of the hidden factors of a, a huge benefit for you and your company. Think about how easy it is to delegate the work of sales to a producer that clearly understands what your company does and can keep up with the same language you put out there with confidence. Now your team understands what they're engaged in. They're happy to, they have confidence in the business. They're actually proud to be part of a business that has this positioning and then given a chance to speak it clearly and boldly themselves. It's very easy. So if they're on an elevator at a conference and they say, Oh, what does your agency do? And they state, they can recite that statement. Doesn't need, don't even have the business owner in the in the elevator with them to to give that bold positioning. You've achieved great heights because now you have evangelists out there doing the work for you. I mean, come on, which business owner doesn't want somebody else out there promoting and and giving recommendations for their business? Well, and think about the benefit to your employees just having an understanding of like, what is it we're doing around here? Why do we show up every day? What is it that we're all aligned around? I call it, what's the, what's the banner that we're marching under as we go to war? And I can remember, I can remember, this is so funny. I remember um, when I had an operations person come on board to be my like head of operations. And she was really smart. She went around and surveyed everyone. And every, one question she asked everybody on the team was, what is it we do here? Right? Like, give us, give us, what's our positioning in your eyes? So first of all, she asked 25 different people. You know how many different answers she got? 28. <laughs> <laughs> and one person even said, sound and music. And I was like, what? We don't do any sound and music. We only do picture. How could one of my employees? <laughs> Anyways, it was so revealing. And of course, what I what I realized was that my partner and I had completely failed to stand in front of our team and invite them into something bigger and larger than themselves. Because well, you also was, told them, you've also created a moment where you told them, we'll do anything for money. Exactly. So yeah, it'll no, fit in. I don't know. Anything for money. So anything you say, that's legit, right? Because we're doing it. And Specifically, what they're doing is commoditizing everything possible. Can you imagine your producer saying anything for money? Well, is it is it money? Cool. Then we'll just add it to the budget, or we'll add it to the line item. Is it profitable? Well, we didn't ask that question. We just asked the question: Does it have money attached to it? We'll do it. Um, and that you you're struggling now as a business owner to fight fight against a tide of of misunderstanding in your own business. Yeah. You you would never want those people to go to a sales meeting with you or a conference with you because imagine the confusion in the marketplace of your brand out there. Um, and instead, if you have a bold positioning, someone could wear a very simple t-shirt and it capture all the good results of it. So I'm going to put you, I'm now going to put you on the spot, Joel, because I didn't, I didn't make you plan for this, but I think you've planned for this for 30 years now. So I think where we fairly justified the idea of what the fear is. Um, and how to overcome that fear with bold positioning. Let's now give an example. I'm gonna make you give an example of, of bold positioning. What, when, when we say bold positioning, what exactly are we looking for as consultants that could tell somebody, hey, bold positioning begins with or should clarify something so everyone can go home right now and do a little bit of homework? Oh, sure. Well, I, 
I'll just say, I'll, I'll answer the question this way. Um, when I did this somewhat um, exhaustive analysis, I said, I'm going to look at all these companies and trying to figure out who's doing this right and who's doing it wrong and what are the patterns. And the biggest pattern that I noticed, um, it was around the same time that I got introduced to Simon Sinek and his Start With Why famous, super famous TED Talk. Go watch that talk again. It completely blew my mind at the time because I said, this is, there's something so fundamental here. But I took his golden circle and I said, it's close. But when you're talking about creative firms, the pattern I observed was a combination of purpose, power, and personality. Meaning I noticed, wow, these really firms that they stand out, they're unique, they're bold, they're known for something, they stand for something, and they, they clearly they don't look like they're taking all kinds of work. Maybe they are, and they're making tons and tons of money, because that certainly happens sometimes, but they stand for something bold and clear. And the pattern was, I have a real strong sense of their purpose, also their power, which I would mean is their expertise, their special how, whatever it is that they do. And then I would say the third component was personality. And you know, I like alliteration. So P, 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 right? Call it the three yeah. P's. And, and whatever it is at work, because I saw David writing it down as soon as you said it. So I, you know that you <laughs> hit the trigger. <laughs> well, what, the other that, that personality component is, is something important not to miss because it's that idea of people don't work with companies. So like your clients don't hire your company, people hire people. And when they hire people, especially in a creative sector, they are looking to work with you, that creative director, right? That director, that executive producer, that animator, that designer. So there's a certain you know, component there of, hey, we're human beings. And as creative people, that personality needs to come out in the way we talk about ourselves. So it's really finding all of those words and phrases and terms and language in those three P's. And then the little ninja move is where do they all come together in a way that is authentic and remarkable? And in the dream, it's tied into our name. So if your name is Viewpoint, <laughs> David, you're going to say, well, our name is Viewpoint for a reason. Like we often forget about our name because we came up with this name 10 years ago and it's like, oh, I'm so over it. You yeah, know? 30 years ago, David's saying. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's so time for a rebrand. <laughs> yeah, right? Maybe, maybe. maybe. So in, in, in my case, I was like, well, if my company is called Impossible, well, damn it, let's own that. So we're, let's take those words and phrases of those three Ps, find where they come together and really authentic and remarkable ways and then flavorize it so that everything we do, you know, leaping a tall building in a single bound, it's, you know, achieving miracles on a daily basis. It's all this language around being impossible. That's where you get some real magic because people are like, damn, every time I interact with this company, it's like they believe who they are. They're, they're talking it, they're living it, they're walking it, they're talking it, all that comes together. So, and I'll say, let's encourage people with this too. You don't have to do this by yourself. Um, it's it's the reason why we're talking to Brittany about putting an accelerator to, together in order to process this language. It's often hard to express and find all the words yourself. And it's good to have a copywriter or a brand strategist doing it. And it's that investment in somebody outside of you to find that last piece, the personality piece, and help you get the words out and own it and give you some feedback. It's it, like any good stylist, any good director that you have hired, it's helping you express something that you have inside. Why put the burden on yourself? If, if you can't get there, don't do it. Um, it I remember, um, well, the work that Matt just finished with one of mm -hmm. his clients to move an entire industry from one industry to another May had to be very, very clear and to the speed at which it happened because someone outside of you was do, outside of that agency was doing it really gave, gave more clarity and more strategy and more purpose to that job. It's just an accountability feature as well. Um, well so our you. encouragement is like, just don't, don't think you can do this all by yourself. This is not necessarily, if you have that ability, great. If you don't, this is a great moment, like bookkeeping services or, you know, Someone, someone to uh, render something. If you know how to render something, this is something else that they can actually hire out and get some work done. 
yeah, you get better, you get much faster and much better results. And I'll be honest, I'm super excited. You mentioned Brittany. So in this upcoming accelerator that we'll be doing around positioning, right? So basically the, the mandate is take you through this process, figure out your positioning in the, the span of one quarter, like get it done. And Brittany is this superstar copywriter that I've used many, many times because even though I fancy myself a smart person, when I'm doing positioning work for one of my clients one-on-one, -on -one, even I can't do it. I am like, I, I can get pretty close, but there's that person who comes in and makes that amazing push over the goal line. And then you just stand back and you're like, okay, that's, that's the, that's the expert strategy and copywriting brain that I don't have. Yeah. It's the brain surgeon, right? So where yeah. you, you want someone to find you for your expertise, it's time for you to find someone else for their expertise. Yeah. It's, I, I really appreciate grabbing hold of this the way we did, because I think this is one of those areas where people are afraid to walk into and take the, take the leap and to just speak, speak at it. It's a common issue. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. It, it's a process and we can, you can get yourself up to the other side of it. And the unique ability that you have to position, position yourself creates so much benefit in so many areas. It's a good thing to get out there in the world. We're going to probably post this video somewhere. I'm going to guess the views on this um, after this play is going to be great because there's just something every one of us deals with in season and time. Right. We all struggle with it. And, and the, oh, I had one more encouragement. I was going to say, oh, I know everybody here knows this. It's the old cobbler's kids have no shoes. Everyone here, if your client asks you to like come up with the brief and come up with that amazing idea and be bold, you do it all the time and you see that work and you see it move the needle and you stand back and go, man, we rule. We crushed this for this client. But then when it's time to apply it to yourself, you're totally in the weeds. So just realize, you know what this looks like. You do it all the time. If you can't do it for yourself, then again, bring it, bring in the, the resources you need and bring in the strategy and, and get it done because it's really powerful. All right. It's two past 2.30 my time. So I want to respect people's uh, time. I do thank you. We did move the weekly briefing from Thursday to Wednesday this week, and we're going to keep this slot going in future. So I'm glad that that didn't set, offset too many people to join us. Um, it's really great to be putting this weekly briefing together for you. And there's more material to come. The reason we did this shift is that we're going to create a different production schedule internally. So uh, hopefully a few more pieces of content out there. And in, if you're inside a community, you'll start seeing new content, new opportunities for engagement rolling out. So we're looking forward to that move as well. Joel, yep. thanks for jumping on, making it happen once again in Lisbon, where you are. And uh, we're going to wrap it up now, but thank you all for being part of it. Please join us in the community if you're not there. DM us, keep the conversation going as much as possible. And Joel, why don't you give them our tagline so we can roll on out here. I was going to say, we exist to help you thrive in your business and in your life and ultimately in your career. Um, also, do us a favor. Tell others about the weekly briefing if you want uh, others to share in this knowledge. So we're happy to share this stuff far and wide. So we appreciate you guys being here. And Tim, I think I will see you. I know I'll see you before next week, but we'll see everybody here and you and me next week. Yeah, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.